following is a quick introduction to uh, adding trend lines uh, to uh, plots and data in Excel. Excel has several tools that we can use to add trend lines and best fits through data. Suppose we measure a set of data. Here we have x values that range from 0 to 1 and then y values that are in this case a sine function with some random noise to simulate some data that we've generated and we want to put a best fit through the data. There's a number of reasons why we might do this. We might want to fit uh, kinetic parameters or other kinds of uh, modeled parameters to a set of data so that we can have a more generic form of the function. Um, or we want to reduce the data so that it's easier to work with than the raw data. So to do to add a trend line to the function, we would we select the data, so once we've plotted it, we select the data by right-clicking it, and then add trend line. Then there's options on the right-hand side here for different kinds of trend lines that Excel will allow us to use. Here we can see a linear, there's a logarithmic fit. Oops, doesn't like the zero value. Add trend line, polynomial moving average. So if we look at, say, a polynomial fit, then we can change the order of the polynomial and adjust the order of the fit as we get to higher and higher values. Um, then we would simply, and then that's it. So then we can, if we click on the trend line, we can add additional options. We can uh, display the equation on the chart, which is useful. And you can see that it now shows us what the equation of the trend line is. If we right click on the trend line, we can format the trend line label. <clears throat> so that we can change uh, we can change the different properties of the trend line. So for instance, we can change it from a numbered format to an exponential format, scientific format. We can change the number of decimal places, and you can see how that modifies the data if we want more or less digits. So here, number, decimal places, we can change that to four, and we get more data values. Then if we wanted to, we could plot this function alongside it, or alongside the original data, or use it in any other way that we, uh, that we want. So that's the first way to modify a uh, to create a trend line in Excel. Another option that's, all, that's often used would be to click on the trend line, trend line options, and we can set the intercept if we like. We can force where we want the intercept to be. So in this case, it's forced through zero. As a, sep as a second example, we can consider, for instance, uh, model for bacteria growth. So here we have um, bacteria, two different strains of bacteria, an E. coli and an S. aureus, uh, and we've measured the concentration or number of cells as a function of time for both of these. If we plot the data, here we're plotting the E. coli data, and you can see we've plotted these, and there's a trend line. In this case, it's an exponential trend line. And this would be a model for the uh, growth of the data. So the number of cells is equal to the initial number of cells multiplied by e to the time divided by a time constant. And we're interested in finding this time constant tau. So the way that we can do that, let's do that for this second strain here. We've already plotted the data. We right click on the data series. Oops. Right click on the data, maybe, there it is, add trend line. In this case, it's an exponential function, so we would click on an exponential curve. Let's display the equation on the chart. Here's the equation. Let's change the text options to make it a little bit
Let's just modify that a little bit. And just raise the font so that we can see it a little bit better. Now in this case, this coefficient out front, 9.7232 would be N0, and then 0 0.0359 would be 1 over the time constant tau. So if we want to know the time constant tau, we type equals 1 divided by 0 0.0359. And if we wanted to know the time constant for the E. coli, that would be equals 1 divided by 0 0.0588 which is this value here, because we know this value is 1 over tau, so tau is 1 over this value. 17 minutes and 27.855 minutes. Now in this case, we know the initial number of cells, so the trend line, you can see, didn't give us 10, even though the initial number of cells was 10. So this is an example where we'd want to set the intercept to a value of 10, so that our curve fit corresponds to the value that we know to be true. As a third example, we can take um, kinetic data. Uh, this is an example where we can find coefficients through curve fitting where our original data don't correspond to one of the values that are one of the types of trend lines that are in Excel. So in this case, we have measured kinetic data, a concentration as a function of time, and we want to fit it to the following kinetic rate law. Here we have the concentration is 1 divided by the quantity, 1 over the initial concentration plus a, a kinetic constant, rate constant times time. So we don't have this functional form in the list of trend line functions that are on the Excel plot, but we can modify this equation so that it is one of those functions. So the way that we can do that is rearrange the function. So if we take 1 divided by this whole equation, then we get 1 over c equals 1 over c0 plus kt. Now we recognize that the quantity 1 over c plotted versus time will be a linear function where 1 over c0 would be the intercept and k would be the slope. That is, this has the form y equals b plus mx, where y is 1 over c, b is 1 over c0, m is k, and x is t. So a plot of 1 over c versus t should be linear. So if we start with time data versus c data, and we want to plot 1 over c, we just q from all, equals... 1 over C, fill that down, and we can, we can plot that, insert scatter plot, okay, now if we right click our data, add trend line. We want a linear trend line. Display the equation on the chart. There's the equation. Probably want to see some more digits on that. So if we go up to the text options. Oops. Let's see. Format this text box. Format trend line label and let's give it a number with more decimal places maybe an exponential scientific four decimal places so that's a little better this gives us a better picture of what that trend line label is so in this case the kinetic constant would be In this case, the kinetic constant, k, would be the slope, and the slope here is 9.6, e to the minus 6, and the constant c0 is 1 over this intercept, 
So equals 1 divided by 1.0472 e to the minus 3. And there's our kinetic uh, constants, k and c0. And we can do that in lots of different cases. Sometimes it's more convenient if you rearrange the equation so that it fits one of the standard profiles that Excel uses. As a final example, there are cases where there are no, uh, you can't massage the equation to get it in a form that Excel will like, but we can use the solver to do that instead. So here's an example where we've measured temperatures and vapor pressure datas, data. Um, the Antoine equation is a common function to fit such data where we have the log 10 of vapor pressure is modeled by the following equation where A, B, and C are constants. Suppose we measured temperature versus vapor pressure and we wanted to find the best fit um, to this functional form where we need to find the values of A, B, and C. To do that, we're going to take the original data, which we know, versus the modeled data for a given guess of A, B, and C, and then we'll take the error between the model and the actual values, and then vary the coefficients so that we can minimize that error. This is similar to what we did before when we were solving equations. So let's go through and see how we can do that. The first thing we do is we need to take our vapor pressure data and take the log base 10 of it. So we go equals log 10 of the vapor pressure data. Fill that down. So here's a plot of our measured data. Then we guess values for the for the model. Okay, so and then we fill in this right hand side function. So we go equals a Um, minus b divided by the quantity t plus c and parentheses. Okay, and then we can fill that down, and you can see that the guess values that we have don't fit the data very well. Okay, it doesn't go through very well at all. We could get a better fit just by guessing. The curve is too high and A is an additive constant, so if we reduce A, make it say, well, it's high by about 5, so let's reduce it by 5. No, nope, too much. If we take it down to maybe 7, then you can see it goes through the data a little bit better. Okay? And you could try playing with other parameters. B, make it 500, maybe make it 2,000, maybe increase C a little bit. So you can change it by hand to try to get a better approximation. That, that always helps if you have a better starting point. <clears throat> now to find the best fit, first we need to know the error between the modeled version and the measured version. So the error is going to be equals, the squ we want the square error so that it's always positive. So equals the quantity measured minus modeled quantity squared. And fill that down. And we can get the sum of the square error to get a single value that represents the overall fit. We just sum of all of these cells. Now we're going to go to our solver, data solver, and we want to set this objective to be minimum by changing cells A, B, and C. Solve. And when we're done, it found a solution. These values of A, B, and C correspond to the best possible fit. Okay, at least using the parameters that we've selected. Now, a, a quantity that can measure the degree of goodness of the fit is the correlation, this R squared value. If we go back to our original demo and click on the trend line, we can display R squared. R squared is a measure of how well the, the error between our fit and the actual uh, data. An R squared of 0 represents a really bad fit. An R squared of 1 represents a perfect fit. So in between those two quantities. And we can show that for the various 
display r squared on the plot, and you can see here it's quite good. In the kinetic uh, example, we can do the same thing, display r squared. You can see again 0.991. Here, though, because we're not curve fitting it with the function, the r squared value is <coughs> um, not available through the graph, so we need to calculate it ourselves. And the Excel has a function that can do that. It's called equals rsq for r squared. And then we give it the uh, uh, measured values. So the y values that we measured and we give it the modeled values. In this case, that would be D11 to D57. And here's our R squared value, 0.9893. There's another function that uh, takes R directly. It's called Corel equals Corel. In this case, it would be the same form, C11 to C57 and D11 to D57. And if we square that value, we can see that we get the same thing as R squared. So you have a function for R and a function for R squared. You can think of, um, you can think of <coughs> R squared as the fraction of the variations in the dependent variable that are as a result of variations in the independent variable. So it's kind of, it's a measure of the approximation of the fit. We can discuss at a later time what the equation is that corresponds to that. So as a recap, Excel, there's at least three ways that we can correlate data. The first is just a raw curve fit using one of Excel's built-in functions where we can show the equation on the chart. The second is to massage the data into a form that will fit one of the built-in functions that we can use, and then interpret the unknown values in terms of the parameters that Excel gives us. So in this case, the intercept was the value we wanted, 1 over C0, and the slope was K. Or we can use the solver function to take our raw data and a modeled form, and then adjust the model parameters so that we minimize the error, the sum of the square error between the modeled and measured data. And that's an introduction to uh, curve fitting in it.